the way I kind of stepped back from Hollywood at one point, you know, being the highest paid actor in Hollywood. Yeah. But I, I felt like, you know, it was it was a ceiling right there. And yeah. I wanted more. It wasn't enough. He said it was for religious reasons. He didn't want to cuss and he didn't want to smoke weed on camera. You know, it's pretty interesting how some of the big names from the past seem to have taken a back seat in Hollywood. Those celebrities who were practically a staple in our lives, making us laugh whenever they appeared on screen. Like Chris Tucker, for example. He was on fire in the 90s and early 2000s with hits like the Friday movies and the Rush Hour series. But then, as time went on, it's like his career hit a rough patch. People started wondering, what happened to Chris Tucker? Now, there's some talk that his buddy from the industry, Ice Cube, might be getting ready to spill the beans on what's really been happening with Chris in Hollywood. And let's face it, Hollywood can be tough for anyone, no matter how talented they are. Ice Cube has been in the game for years, so he's seen firsthand how brutal the industry can be on these celebs. So what's the word from Ice Cube? Let's find out. Back in 95, Chris Tucker teamed up with Ice Cube for the iconic movie Friday, where Tucker's character Smokey became a legend. But when the sequel Next Friday came around five years later, something was off. Smokey was nowhere to be seen. People were puzzled, wondering why such a big character was missing. It turns out, after the success of the first Friday, Tucker was asked to reprise his role as Smokey for the sequel. But he declined even though he rocked the role and got nominated for an MTV Movie Award. Why did he turn it down? Well, Ice Cube spilled the beans during a chat on the Full Season podcast. They were ready to offer Tucker a cool $12 million to come back, but he had other plans. He declined, citing religious reasons. So Chris Tucker had his reasons for turning down the next Friday sequel. It wasn't just about religion, though that played a part. Tucker wanted to take a different path, one that didn't involve dropping F-bombs or puffing on the green stuff on screen anymore. When his son came along, Tucker felt the need to clean up his act, especially around his kid. He didn't want to be swearing all the time, especially with his child around. So he started looking for roles that were more positive and didn't rely on just getting laughs through raunchy humor, Tucker said. A lot of my not cussing started when I had a son. I heard my younger self on a tape cussing once and just felt like I had to do better. He wanted to prove that he could be funny without relying on swearing every other word. Being a Christian also influenced Tucker's comedy. He felt he had to dig deeper to find funny material that wasn't raunchy. He welcomed the challenge, even though it was harder than relying on easy jokes. Really? Yeah, he turned it down. Yeah, we wanted to pay him $12 million to do that movie. He said it was for religious reasons. He didn't want to cuss and he didn't want to smoke weed on camera. Another reason Tucker didn't do the sequel was because of the weed. He didn't want to promote everyone smoking weed, especially after seeing how the first movie became so popular. He kept this reason to himself for a while, but decided to share it later on. He wanted to be careful about the messages he was sending out to his fans. So here's the deal with Chris Tucker's career journey. After making a name for himself with hits like the Rush Hour movies, Tucker wanted to explore different roles and show off his acting range. But Hollywood seemed to have different plans for him. Once the rush hour buzz faded, Tucker found himself struggling to land roles. It felt like he disappeared from the scene altogether. No movies, no TV appearances, nada. Some fans believe that Tucker's desire to mature his career led to Hollywood sidelining him. He also faced financial setbacks due to some unfortunate decisions, messy paperwork, and debts he overlooked. Despite earning big bucks from the Rush Hour franchise, including a whopping $20 million payday for the sequel and hefty contracts for Rush Hour 3, Tucker ran into financial trouble. He owed a substantial amount in unpaid taxes dating back to 2011, which ballooned to $14 million by 2014. On top of that, he faced issues with real estate deals gone sour. In 2014, he settled a $14.5 million tax bill, blaming it on poor accounting. However, in November 2021, the IRS came knocking again, demanding $9.6 million in back taxes. Despite the financial chaos, Tucker still had assets like his Georgia home. But there's good news too. His career is making a comeback. He returned to the big screen in the sports drama Air, alongside stars like Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Plus, he's gearing up for Rush Hour 4, reprising his role as Carter, and he's keeping his comedy game strong, performing across the US. 
As of 2023, Tucker's net worth has improved to a cool $5 million, showing that he's bouncing back after facing financial and career challenges. Let's talk about how tough it can get in Hollywood. Chris Tucker's not the only one who's faced rough patches. Some of his fellow celebs have gone through similar struggles, with outcomes varying. Take Monique, for example. She's an Oscar-winning actress who's been vocal about her disagreements with big names like Lee Daniels, Oprah Winfrey, and Tyler Perry. Monique claims that these industry heavyweights colluded to sideline her after she refused to do promotional press for the 2009 film Precious Without Pay. Things got heated when Oprah and Tyler wanted Monique to promote the film worldwide for free, despite her contract only offering her a modest $50,000 for the entire movie. Monique stood her ground, refusing to work for free, but instead of understanding her position, Oprah and Tyler allegedly tarnished her reputation in the industry, painting her as difficult to work with. Monique revealed that Tyler Perry even suggested she consider promoting the film because of the potential financial rewards if she won an Oscar. But Monique wasn't having it. She questioned the fairness of the salary offers, especially for a black woman like herself. Despite pressure from Tyler Perry, who argued against giving money away for free, Monique remained firm, emphasizing her belief in fair compensation for her work. It boiled down to a clash of values, with Monique refusing to compromise her principles, even if it meant facing backlash in the industry. Monique didn't stop there with her revelations. She also accused Tyler Perry of actively interfering with her acting opportunities. It all started after Monique declined an invitation to attend the Cannes Film Festival in France to promote Precious. He says, well, I don't believe in giving money away for free. I said, I don't believe in working for free, so we're on the same page. Despite the studio's attempts to entice her with perks like a fancier hotel room, Monique and her husband decided to prioritize family time over the trip. When the studio persisted, her husband straightforwardly asked about compensation for the appearance. That's when they dropped the bombshell. They never pay for promotional appearances. Monique, who was paid a meager $50,000 for Precious, emphasized that her decision wasn't about the money, but rather about honoring her commitment to the film and spending time with her loved ones. However, the media spun the situation, portraying Monique as unreasonable and demanding. Despite the simple request for compensation being declined, Monique found herself unfairly labeled. She even demanded apologies from Oprah and Tyler Perry, which she has yet to receive. Moving on to another story, let's talk about Stacey Dash. You might remember her as the iconic character Dion from the 90s hit Clueless. She was a household name back then, but her Hollywood journey took some unexpected twists and turns. Following her rise to fame, Stacey Dash decided to make a bold move. Instead of sticking to the typical Hollywood path, she ventured into the realm of political commentary. That's right, the Clueless star transitioned into a political commentator, causing quite a stir in Tinseltown. Stacey didn't hold back with her conservative viewpoints, especially when it came to criticizing Barack Obama and taking stands on contentious social issues. Now here's the thing, Hollywood tends to lean left, so Stacey's outspoken conservatism turned heads and sparked heated debates both on news networks and social media platforms. And we said we understood because what people didn't know was I was paid $50,000 to do the movie Precious. And it really wasn't about the money, and I'm not complaining because I signed up to do it with my friend. In an industry where personal beliefs can make or break you, Stacey Dash didn't hesitate to swim against the tide. Her political stance not only set her apart, but also put her at odds with many of her peers in Hollywood. Next up, let's talk about Jesse Smollett. His journey in Hollywood has been a roller coaster ride. You might recognize him from Empire, where he portrayed Jamal Lyon, making waves as an openly gay black character on TV. It was groundbreaking stuff. But then things took a dramatic turn in January 2019 when Jussie reported being the victim of a hate crime in Chicago. Initially, there was an outpouring of support for him, but as more details emerged, doubts started to surface about the authenticity of his story. Suddenly, Jussie went from being seen as a victim to facing serious legal trouble, with a 16-count indictment for allegedly filing a false police report. The legal saga was filled with twists and turns, with charges being dropped and reinstated, leaving the media and the public captivated by the unfolding drama. 
This whole ordeal not only put a blemish on Jesse's reputation, but also cast a shadow over his future in Hollywood. His role in Empire was written out of the final episode, leaving uncertainty about his next steps in the industry. Now, let's shift our focus to Wesley Snipes, the actor who made a significant impact in the 90s with his memorable roles in movies like New Jack City, White Men Can't Jump, and The Blade Trilogy. Wesley was known for his versatility, charisma, and unique on-screen presence. However, his Hollywood journey encountered a major obstacle in the early 2000s. Imagine this, Wesley finds himself in the midst of a highly publicized tax evasion case. Legal battles ensued, dragging on for a considerable amount of time. The climax came when Wesley was convicted for willfully evading federal income tax returns in 2010, resulting in a three-year prison sentence. His time behind bars marked a hiatus from acting and the public eye, shifting the focus from his performances to the legal troubles overshadowing his career. It's a stark reminder of how quickly fame can become shaky, especially when personal issues take center stage. Upon his release, Wesley attempted a comeback with roles in films like The Expendables 3 and Coming to America, but it wasn't the triumphant return he might have hoped for. Now, let's talk about the iconic Will Smith. His Hollywood journey reads like a blockbuster movie itself, from his breakout role in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air to his domination of the big screen, with hits like Independence Day and Men in Black. But the plot took an unexpected turn at the 2022 Academy Awards. Picture this, live on TV, Will Smith confronts comedian Chris Rock on stage and slaps him. The reason? Chris made a joke about Will's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. The incident sent shockwaves around the world, leaving everyone stunned. This whole situation not only damaged Jussie's reputation, but also raised doubts about his future in Hollywood. Being written out of the final episode of Empire left his next career moves uncertain. Now, let's turn our attention to Wesley Snipes, the actor who left a big mark in the 90s with his roles in movies like New Jack City, White Men Can't Jump, and The Blade Trilogy. Wesley was praised for his talent, charm, and unique presence on screen. However, his Hollywood journey faced a major obstacle in the early 2000s. Imagine this, Wesley gets caught up in a highly publicized tax evasion case. The legal battles dragged on for a long time, and it all culminated in Wesley being found guilty of deliberately evading federal income tax returns in 2010, leading to a three-year prison sentence. His time behind bars meant a break from acting in the public eye, shifting attention from his performances to his legal troubles. It's a clear reminder of how fame can become unstable, especially when personal issues take the spotlight. After his release, Wesley tried to revive his career with roles in films like The Expendables 3 and Coming to America, but it wasn't the triumphant comeback he had hoped for. Now let's discuss the legendary Will Smith. His Hollywood journey has been like a blockbuster movie itself, from his breakthrough in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air to his success on the big screen with movies like Independence Day and Men in Black. But things took an unexpected turn at the 2022 Academy Awards. Imagine this, live on TV, Will Smith confronts comedian Chris Rock on stage and slaps him. The reason? Chris made a joke about Will's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. The incident sent shockwaves worldwide, leaving everyone in disbelief. Massive backlash hit Will like a tidal wave after the slap incident, seen as uncool and a blow to his squeaky clean image. He even stepped down from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and got barred from their events for a solid 10 years. The guy known for his positivity found himself in the midst of controversy, with everyone questioning his judgment and professionalism. Moving forward, he apologized to Chris Rock, and some believe he'll bounce back just fine. I mean, it's Will Smith we're talking about. Next up is Isaiah Washington. You know him from Grey's Anatomy, where he played the suave Dr. Preston Burke, a role that catapulted him to fame. But brace yourself, because his Hollywood journey takes a sharp turn. It all starts when he utters a homophobic slur on the Grey's Anatomy set. Suddenly, it's the talk of the town, with the industry, big on inclusivity and respect, showing no mercy. They cast a shadow over Washington, and the backlash hits him like a Hollywood storm. In 2000, conversations about his departure surfaced due to his alleged homophobic comment. Grey's Anatomy pulls the plug on renewing Washington's contract. The incident becomes a real-life soap opera, showcasing the delicate balance between personal beliefs, public actions, and career opportunities. Despite Washington's apology, the incident looms over his career. 
Post Grey's Anatomy, landing roles of similar magnitude becomes a daunting task for him. It's as if the Hollywood powers that be made him jump through hoops to regain his spot in the spotlight. Next is Columbus Short, the actor who charmed us in Stomp the Yard and as Harrison on Scandal. He had charisma for days, and we all thought he was on the road to Hollywood greatness. But here comes the twist. Columbus Short's off-screen life spiraled into a wild drama. Reports of domestic issues and substance use surfaced, overshadowing his red carpet moments. In 2014, he shocked everyone by announcing his departure from Scandal, a show beloved by fans and praised by critics. Leaving Scandal wasn't just about losing a steady job. It meant saying goodbye to a major platform that had put him in the spotlight of Hollywood's attention. And you know how it goes when the spotlight fades. It became harder to land those great roles. Suddenly, the offers weren't coming in like they used to, and his presence in Hollywood seemed to fade faster than last season's fashion trends. But don't hit pause just yet. Columbus Short, the comeback kid, decided to face the music. He took some time off to sort out his personal issues and plan his Hollywood comeback. After all, life's a journey, right? Let's see where Columbus's Hollywood story heads next. Now on to Darius McCrary. You might know him as Eddie Winslow from the classic sitcom Family Matters. Back in the 90s, he was a big deal, becoming a household name and securing his place in American pop culture. But life after Family Matters wasn't all sunshine in Hollywood. McCrary found himself trapped in a typecasting maze. While playing Eddie Winslow made him famous, breaking free from that image proved to be as challenging as solving a Rubik's Cube. Casting directors and fans couldn't see him as anyone other than the Winslow kid, making it hard to land roles that showcased his full talent. And this struggle with typecasting is a common tale in Hollywood. Post Family Matters, he tried his hand at various TV and movie projects. But let's be honest, none quite matched the fame he gained as Eddie Winslow. McCrary's journey sheds light on a bigger issue, especially for child actors transitioning to adult roles. It's like trying to find your way out of a maze blindfolded. McCrary's story reflects the challenges many actors face in breaking free from their past characters. But fast forward to today, and McCrary is still in the game, taking on diverse roles and exploring different creative adventures. His resilience and dedication in the face of typecasting obstacles serve as a Hollywood survival guide. So kudos to Darius McCrary for staying true to himself in the roller coaster ride of Tinseltown. And now let's applaud Halle Berry, the Hollywood pioneer whose story is like a roller coaster ride filled with highs, lows, and groundbreaking moments. Remember when she made history by winning the Oscar for Best Actress in Monsters Ball back in 2002? Yeah, that was a game changer. She became the first black woman to win that prestigious award, shaking up Hollywood's diversity landscape. But wait, life after winning the Oscar wasn't all glamorous for Barry. Despite her triumph, finding roles that truly showcased her talent proved to be as challenging as navigating a maze blindfolded. Her Academy Award win shed light on a larger issue, the struggle for substantial and nuanced roles for black actresses in Hollywood, even those with proven skills and critical acclaim. It seemed like Hollywood was stuck in a diversity rut. Barry's journey post-Oscar had its ups and downs. Some of her film choices raised eyebrows, and her personal struggles played out in the public eye. Being in the spotlight wasn't always easy. There was constant scrutiny and an unspoken pressure to keep proving herself, regardless of the awards on her shelf. But here's where Barry's resilience shines through. Despite the obstacles, she stayed true to herself. She sought out diverse roles and fought against typecasting. And to top it off, she even stepped behind the camera as a director with Bruised, showing that she's not just a talented actress, but a force to be reckoned with behind the scenes as well. Let's raise a toast to Halle Berry for not only making history, but also navigating the storms of Hollywood with grace, strength, and undeniable talent. Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments below, and we'll catch you in the next video.